Alrighty, good morning everyone. Welcome everyone, welcome ladies and gentlemen to a new release premiere Friday. Yeah! That is right ladies and gentlemen, today, a full day of gameplay streaming right here on YouTube, on DSP Gaming, and today we are doing something new and fresh and different, which I thoroughly enjoy when we get to do it because it means that we get some variety here on my streams. Instead of all the same ongoing playthroughs, we get something tossed into the mix, right, that, uh, that ends up making things a little bit fresh. And today is no exception for sure. Today I'm playing a game that is something that's way outside of my comfort zone, something that I would usually not ever do, a sports game. But of course, this game is a first-party Nintendo title, Mario Golf Super Rush. Yeah, pretty interesting to see a Mario Golf title. Uh, it's been quite some time since they put out a Mario Golf title, if I remember correctly, but like a really long time. And, you know, in recent years, I've played some first-party Nintendo games that are similar to this, most notably Mario Tennis. If you remember, I played Mario Tennis, whatever the hell it was called, uh, a few years ago. <clears throat> And the good thing about when, when Nintendo does first-party games like this, it's not just a online, play-against-other-people kind of a deal like most of the other sports games would be. This one has an adventure story mode, an actual RPG-esque campaign that you play through, and as you play through it, you unlock the courses so that when you go online, everything's unlocked and you get all the content of the game. So, that's pretty cool. I'll be checking this out starting today, and yes, of course we're going to be doing the story mode first. It would make no sense to not play through the main meat of the game first and unlock all the content. Now, I don't know how tough this game is. If you guys remember, Mario Tennis was very challenging and took me quite some time to beat because the game was so tough. I don't know if Mario Golf will be like that or not. Um, but I'm going to take my time and play through this story mode. I don't know how long it is. It'll be interesting to see what characters they've included in the game, what you know, the courses and, and all the content. Now, once we've beaten the story mode, now who knows how long that's going to take. But once we've beaten the story mode, um, I will then likely be che checking out some online multiplayer. I don't know how tough that's going to be. I don't know if it'll be laggy. Who knows? All right. But basically, I'm going to be checking out all the content of this game over the course of the next couple of weeks. FYI, this is officially not only the last new release of June, but it's pretty much the last new release until like mid to late July when Skyward Swords Remake is coming out on the Switch. Uh, there is just nothing going on in the realm of new games right now, okay? So for the, the, the short term, my focus will be Mario Golf Super Rush, Fallout New Vegas, Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition, and finishing up Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which it looks like we may actually finish that tomorrow, okay? The chill late streams will be as I've been doing, including Danganronpa V3, <clears throat> excuse me, a weekly session of MLB The Show, a weekly session of Street Fighter, okay, and... Call of Duty, this week I'm actually doing it for twice. First time in a long time I'm doing it twice a week. If it works, great. If not, we don't have to do Call of Duty that much. We can only just do it once a week. But let's see how it turns out when I play it again on uh, Sunday night. Okay? So that's the near future. That's what you guys can expect. Now, over the month of July, since there's literally only one major new release, obviously that means we need to do some other stuff. Okay? So... I've got some ideas that I've been mulling over in my head. Um, you know, some some games that I've actually wanted to play for quite some time and just either haven't had a chance or that we've been so busy with other stuff that it just hasn't been the right time. I'm also open to your suggestions. I know there's maybe a few games that maybe you guys have wanted to see me play that maybe I haven't done. What I'm thinking is the next two weeks we're probably going to be booked regardless because the games that I'm playing are very lengthy. You know what I mean? Like the games that I'm in the midst of right now are pretty long playthroughs. So, it's not like we're going to dry up on content in the next couple of weeks. I really don't feel that's going to happen at all. But at some point in July, we're going to say, man, we'd like something new to add into the mix, okay? So, I would definitely like to hear your input on what you would like to see moving forward in the month of July. Once we hit August, we're good. August, there's a new release every week. September, October are incredibly busy release months. But we just basically just got to get through July, and then we're good. Okay, so... Curious to hear what you guys, uh, what you guys have to say about what you would like to see in July. I'm all ears. Share your ideas with me. 
you know, what kind of uh, gameplay, what kind of playthroughs would you like to see? Some of my ideas, for example, would be Chrono Trigger. I only played Chrono Trigger once ever with you guys. It was many years ago. I believe it was 2013. So we're talking eight years ago. It was a very different style of commentary and gameplay back then. You know, it wasn't interactive streaming. It was when I just started with direct capture stuff. Today, it would be a very different kind of playthrough where we get to chill and talk and enjoy the game together as a kind of an interactive thing, which I really love. And I would, I've been wanting to play Chrono Trigger again in many years. One of my favorite RPGs of all time. Um, Lost Odyssey. That's an RPG I've wanted to play for, like, forever. <laughs> and I never got around to it. The thing is, I know it's incredibly long, and my concern is if I were to start that, I don't know if I'd be able to finish it before all the, the new releases start hitting in the fall. Okay? Daggy Swimmer says, how about some one-off surprise streams, like a day stream of Street Fighter or a multiplayer game with members or something like that? Snowcross says, Call of Duty or other PvP games with subscribers and members. Okay. Interesting. When you say Street Fighter, Daki Smurf, are you saying old school Street Fighter? The thing is, old school Street Fighter works once a week for two hours because I feel that's just enough. It satiates my appetite for it, and you guys get to see some throwback retro stuff with me. You get to see the games that I actually have expertise in. But I feel like if I played it more than that, that it would kind of overstay its welcome. Plus, let's face it, the collection is shit, has a lot of issues, and a lot of people who troll. Imagine me trying to do like a, like a major stream of that. Or a whole day of that with the trolling just non-stop, right? Hmm. Alright, anyway. I'm be taking all of your suggestions. Oh, here you go. Just the facts, ma'am, says Final Fantasy VII original playthrough. That was another idea that I had. Absolutely, that was another idea that I had for July was to play through the original Final Fantasy VII. Because that's one that I wanted to play before the remake. It never happened. And it would be very interesting to see how that game what the real plot is and how it stacks up against the remake when it comes to gameplay mechanics because I love turn-based gameplay. I think the gameplay of Final Fantasy VII is really good. I just think the story is kind of weak. But I think that the, the gameplay was outstanding. Okay. Ah. Okay, so. We shall see. Let's see what... Again, I'm going to take in your feedback, all right? Let's talk about this week so you guys know what to expect for the rest of the week heading into next week. So today, it's the premiere of Mario Golf Super Rush right here on the stream. Should be a good three plus hours of gameplay playing through the story mode. We'll see what happens. See, how, see what they've got in store for us. I hope it's pretty fun. I've heard there's combat and everything in the game, which I know is wild. Like a, a, a golf game with combat. Interesting. <laughs> we'll see how that pans out. Uh, later tonight, it is my weekly throwback session of Street Fighter on the late stream at 6.45 p.m. Pacific Time. <laughs> I'm definitely excited for that. You guys know how much I like, love playing the old school Street Fighter stuff. Tomorrow, it is the probable conclusion of Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. The reason I say probable is because it's not guaranteed that it's going to conclude, but we're very close to the end. At this point, we've got to redo... Uh, well, not redo, but there's a little bit of content to do on a world we've already been on. That's where we just landed with, with Ratchet. After that, there's two final worlds to the game, and then the finale. Now, for what I'm to understand, the finale is like an hour-long boss fight. It's just crazy long, going through all these dimensions and stuff. Um, so we'll see. Will I be able to beat it tomorrow or not? I don't know. It's possible. It's just not a guarantee. Okay. Um, so let's see. But uh, Let's see if we can beat it tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow night will be Danganronpa V3 continuing. Very excited for Danganronpa V3 to continue. I hope you guys will join me for that tomorrow. Um, and then on Sunday, it'll be more Mario Golf, my second session of it. Sunday night's going to be Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. If you're wondering why there's two Black Ops streams this week, it's because originally it was going to be Virtua Fighter, but after hitting the wall in Virtua Fighter the other day and figuring out that, uh... Basically, there's no way I can advance in the game without sinking a significant amount of time investment into it. I just don't have the time to do it right now, nor do I really feel like I want to. Um, so there's no point in continuing to play the game when I will continuously be beaten by tactics that I don't know how to stop. You know, getting hit by a one floaty counter-hit move mid-screen that leads to a 50-60% to 60 juggle combo. Well, I don't even know a juggle combo. So, <laughs> I can't really even do anything about it. I, can't, I don't know how to sidestep properly, you know? I would have to sit there and lab it out, watch videos, practice stuff. I don't have time for that. I just don't. If this were a hot new release fighting game and people wanted to see me invest that time to learn the engine because it was going to have longevity, then I would maybe do it. But there's no point in doing that. 
in a game as old as Virtua Fighter 5. Okay, so I enjoyed playing it the little bit I did. I'm glad I got a little bit of knowledge of the game, and I know what it is now for future reference, but pretty much dead now. Okay, so I'm going to do some more Call of Duty on Sunday night instead. And by the way, this should be exciting because I'm going to unlock the dual AMP-63 pistols. So we'll have dual auto pistols going crazy. That should be pretty exciting. I hope you'll join me for that Sunday night. Then on Monday, it's going to be Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition continuing. Uh, we finished the Leviathan DLC, so we'll be heading back into the main plot of the game, going back to the Citadel. I know there's a few missions there to do. And then continuing on from there. And then Monday night will be more Danganronpa V3. Okay? So, even more. Double dose over the weekend. This should have us complete the current class trial that we're in and head into the fifth major chapter of the game. For one to understand, there's a fifth and final chapter, and then there's like a epilogue chapter. So, we will finally be heading into the end game of the game soon enough in Danganronpa V3. Okay? That's the schedule. I'm off on Tuesday. Uh, next week, it'll just, as usual, be a mix between all the games I'm currently playing and the chill streams. It should be a good time, by the way. I believe next week, I may actually be here for another eight days of streaming. Let me think about this. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday. Yeah, I think next week I'm here for eight straight days, too. So I have eight days of streaming this week, then a break of one day, and then eight more days of streaming. Holy crap. The schedule is, uh, <laughs> it's a doozy right now. By the way, if you guys haven't heard, we're about to have an incredible heat wave here in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. We are going to have unprecedented temperatures. We're supposed to have temperatures over this weekend for the hottest it's ever been here in 127 years. This is it. Earth is opening up. The pits of hell are gonna are gonna erupt. Pitchforks, brimstone, demons all over the streets. Asphalt turning into liquid. Oh my god! I don't know how we're gonna survive it, man. The good news here is, we have air conditioning in the house. I mean, it's not the best. We have two air conditioners that are upstairs because those are the only windows we have that can open that we can put air conditioners in. So we can keep the house cool. It's gonna still be kind of stuffy and hot in certain places. But we can, for the most part, keep the house cool. All right? The bad news is, my wife has to work. <laughs> she has to go out and drive in this weather. And that's not good. Obviously, I don't, you know, it's going to suck. I mean, she works indoors. She works indoors with air conditioning. So it's not the end of the world. But, yeah, I feel for anyone out there who basically is in the Pacific Northwest and has to do outdoor shit over the weekend. Oh, my God. We're, it's, it's supposed to be hit over 110 degrees. Over 110 degrees. What the frick? And the, the worst part about all that is most people out here don't have any kind of air conditioning because it used to be that it didn't get this hot here. Like I said, this is the hottest temperatures in 127 years. So no one out here is ready for this kind of heat. A lot of people don't have any way to cool down. Luckily, we have the air conditioners. But holy shit, if we didn't. So this shouldn't affect the streams. Uh, at all. I just feel, I hope my wife is okay, you know, going to work in, the, in these days in this incredible heat. Um, but, my day off on Tuesday, oh, we, we get a break. Listen to this. This is what the weatherman said this morning. Oh, we'll get a break on Tuesday. It's only going to be 95 degrees. <laughs> only. Only 95? Oh, man. The big chill has begun. Thanks so much, bro. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Unreal. But, uh, Exactly right, just the facts, man. He says, I hope the power grid holds out. And that's that's a major concern. When you have a giant heat wave like this, everyone is going to have air conditioning on if they have it. That could be a giant drain on the power grid. That's absolutely true. So you got to hope, hope that the power grid holds out. Okay. So anyway, guys, um... Thank you for listening. That is the schedule and uh, what we'll be going through the next few days. Just a, qu a few quick things I'd like to remind everyone. I should have a shout-out, a super chat to give a shout-out for and a tip to give a shout-out for here. Let's, uh, let's quickly go through a few things, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, I am an independent content creator. I am not contracted with any company to make money because I'm streaming, okay? Don't have any partnerships with anybody or anything like that, all right? I make a living based off of your crowdfunding. 
You guys come and watch my content, my streams, my on-demand videos. You say, wow, I really like that content. I want to see you continue. And then you contribute via various methods, and that's how I make a living. I want to say thank you in advance to anyone who contributes today. Thank you so much for allowing me to do what I love for a living. It really is a special thing that you guys like what I do so much that I get to enjoy games and share those daily gameplay experiences with you guys in an interactive setting, having this fun social experience, you know? Um... How can you contribute? Well, you can either do a super chat or super sticker through YouTube. You can become a channel member, which has many different benefits, including getting uh, a, a highlighted name in the chat. Also, having a cool chat crown next to your name to show how long you've been a supporter. You have to get access to emotes. Right now, we have 17. When we hit 200 members, we'll unlock another. And then also, you don't have to abide by the slow mode regulations of the chat. Anyone else in the chat has to wait 10 seconds to type, but if you're a member, you don't have to wait. So you get all those cool benefits for being a member. And by the way, if we hit the member's goal of 250 members, by the end of the month, it means we'll be doing a special marathon reward event, which could either be an Indies event, the return of the rage -athon. It could be a special retrospective marathon. All depending on what you guys want. But we have to hit the membership goal first. And we are definitely far away from that. I'd appreciate it if you guys like the content. If you could jump on and become a member today, that would be really awesome. Okay? Thank you again in advance for anyone who contributes. Keep in mind, we do have reward tiers for tips, okay? If you tip me, first of all, how do you tip me? If you look at the description of the video, there's a link. You can, you can tip me there. Or if you type exclamation point tip into the stream chat, there's also a link to tip me. There's reward tiers for tips. If we raise $50 in tips, I'll put on my gunner glasses. For $100 in tips, you guys get to pick a vest. Now, yesterday I wore the platinum and the camo. <laughs> So that means today it would be the beige, the red, the denim, and the blue vests that would all be eligible to be worn on today's streams. You might say, well, why do you only have reward goals like that for tips? Well, it's very simple because tips help me more than the other kinds of contribution. When you tip me, that's that's something that I can use immediately to pay a bill. It's something that I can use. I just I just bought Mario Golf with this these, these tip funds last night. When I have my day off on Tuesday for grocery shopping, buying pet supplies, etc., it's all tips that pay for that stuff. Going out to dinner with my wife, it's all tips to pay for that. So, please consider tipping me. It is the best way to contribute, although I do appreciate memberships and super chats. They're all great. And you will get a shout-out no matter how you contribute, as long as it's a positive contribution and not something that's negative or meant to derail or troll the stream. You'll also get pop-up messages if you do contribute. By the way... As of last night, as of this morning, excuse me, I fixed the pop-up messages, I think, for those who are resubscribing to the channel. Of course, here it's called becoming a member or re-sponsoring, I guess. I can't hear they call it. They call it a sponsorship, and now they call it a channel member. They, what it is, I think YouTube changed the name at some point in the middle. At first, it was a sponsorship, and then they changed it to being a member, and now it's confusing terminology. But anyway, if you renew your membership to my channel here on DSP Gaming, the, the pop-up animation has been fixed. I changed it so it actually reflects the proper crowns now. Um, so thanks in advance to anyone who contributes in any way. Let's quickly start off with some shout-outs here. I believe, it, first of all, we start off with a super chat. Good, by the way, good morning, Habib Gaming. Good to see you. How you doing? Uh, let's get my super chat queue loaded here so I can see what this is. All right, our first super chat today is from DXP. Let's get that up on the leaderboard. Thank you, DXP, for the first Super Chat of the day. And DXP says, I'm sure you've addressed this multiple times. Why is it you dislike more recent Street Fighters? Well, first of all, I don't dislike recent Street Fighters. I just dislike Street Fighter V. Street Fighter IV, I felt, had strengths and weaknesses. Um, certainly, it wasn't perfect. But I feel that it was a competitive game that, over time, had highs and lows, depending on what version of the game you were playing. The thing I didn't like about Street Fighter 4 was that they dumbed down the controls a lot. You could literally double tap a corner and get a Shoryuken instead of actually having to do the motion. I didn't like that. I felt it made it way too scrub friendly. But the fundamentals of the game were good, and at a high level, the game was quite challenging. Okay? Um, so, that's what I think about Street Fighter 4. Now, Street Fighter 5 basically was one of the most underwhelming rocky start fighting games i've ever seen in the entirety of my life okay what i mean by that is if you remember when street fighter 5 came out way back when in what was it 2010 um no, what am i talking about 2015 right i think it was 2015 or at least that's when the beta was supposed to come out the game essentially 
was a huge disappointment. All right, why? At launch, it was online only. There were no offline components to the game besides the training mode. That was it. Um, there was no arcade mode, no story, nothing. No offline content at all. And because of that, everyone had to play online. Guess what didn't work at launch? The online play. And in fact, it took upwards of two to three months for them to fix the online and make it consistent enough that you could play consistently. It was a huge mess. At launch, the game had the most input delay of any fighting game ever created. They actually designed the game to have monstrous input delay from the time when you pushed a button to when the actual thing happened in the game. It was ludicrously slow. It was bad. It felt like you were playing underwater. And it allowed the game to basically only be played in certain methods. Like, you couldn't play it in a method where you see your opponents move and you react in time to stop it. It was basically impossible. In particular, when you were playing online. I mean, offline, maybe it was a little better. But it was just not possible to really do that kind of gameplay. And sadly, that's fundamentally part of Street Fighter, is to see your opponent make a mistake and react to it and punish it. You couldn't really do that in the game at first because it was so delayed, okay? The game also really didn't have any viable footsies gameplay, meaning it wasn't about, oh, play from mid-range, try to throw out a couple moves, bait your opponent, use some combos. It wasn't. It was about do a pattern. Every character had a pattern that you could just repeat ad nauseum that was essentially safe. Do this pattern of moves, you're safe, you can't be punished, Nothing. no one can really do anything to you. And it basically made the game boring. Every character was played exactly the same. You wouldn't you wouldn't watch competitive play of Street Fighter V and see, oh look, one person plays Ryu this way, one person plays Ryu completely differently. No, it was, here's Ryu and here's how he's played competitively, period. Because the game was all pattern play. There was no actual, like, intelligent thought to the gameplay. It was just ad nauseum the same shit over and over. Now, there's many other issues with the game as well. Some things that I really don't like about it are the fact that the game developers went out of their way <clears throat> to actually take characters who were tried and true characters from the Street Fighter franchise and change them completely so they didn't even play like those characters. I'll give you a perfect example. Vega. Vega has always been a charge move character. He's always been reliant on pokes, wall dives, and the like. That was his effective move strategy to, to be an effective character okay they change him in street fighter 5 to be rounded motions completely different play style doesn't play anything like his old school version so guess what essentially vega is not in street fighter 5 i mean the character model is but that's not vega that's not how vega plays that's a new character in street fighter 5 i want vega if you're gonna put vega in the game make it be like fucking vega's gameplay this would be like you put ryu in the game but he's a grappler and he doesn't throw fireballs what that's essentially what they did with certain characters. Blanca is the same thing. They took characters that were classic characters and basically ruined them, turning them into these oddball hybrid characters that just weren't fun to play if you're someone who's played the old school games. <clears throat> so, as for me, someone who has played Street Fighter 2 since its inception back in arcades in the early 90s, Street Fighter 5 was a game that was designed to basically be played by the masses as a scrubby game. It doesn't have any of the fundamentals of old school Street Fighter. There's no reactions to moves and punishment. There's no mid-screen mid footsies or planning. It's just pick a character, play a pattern, mash it out, you win. Okay? It's, it's boring. It was some of the most boring gameplay I've ever seen in my entire fucking life. I couldn't stand the game. Remember, I played it launch year. I played it a good three, four months, and after that, I couldn't stand it anymore. I was like, God, this game's just getting worse the further in that it gets. Now, over the years, what did they do? They reprogrammed the game from the ground up. They got rid of all the input delay because everyone complained and said, this is the terrible game. Why would you have it based around input delay? They added in countless amounts of DLC characters. They kept patching and repatching and retweaking the gameplay to be different, you know, on a six to eight month basis. So today, arguably, Street Fighter V is a very different game than it was when it first came out five years ago, all right? But, unless you've been following the, the game every step of the way, unless you've been dropping money into the game every six to eight months to buy every single DLC character, there's no way you could even keep up with it. Essentially, what Capcom did is they hooked people into this pay-to-play formula that you have to keep buying characters in the game and keep playing the new mo moves and the new, the new version in order to know what's going on in the game. You couldn't have just played the original and then jump in today and understand it. So what it is is they fucked it up 
to the point where they had to try to fix it. But every time they fixed it, they changed the game and made it even more of a, of a, of a jump to learn and play. Today, I have zero desire to play Street Fighter V. That game is so fucking played out at this point, but it's hilarious that you still see people fanboying over it. Cons oh my god, Street Fighter V, new character, gotta drop my money on it. It's like, what are you talking about? Dude, the game's five fucking years old. You're still buying characters for this nickel and dime game. Like, do you realize that Capcom will never have incentive to make a good fighting game if you support this kind of practice? They could literally always release a piece of shit, you'll buy it anyway, then you'll continuously give them more money for five fucking years because you bought the marketing scam. Capcom has no other competitive fighters out right now. Zero. So they need you to spend money on Street Fighter V or they're making no money on any fighting game franchises. So what do they do? Oh, the Capcom Pro Tour League and hype up this and hype up this stream. And by the way, they pay people to kiss the game's butt. Yes, they behind the scenes sponsor people to kiss the game's butt constantly those pro players who are all constantly playing the game and talking about it do you really think that they're doing it out of the kindness of their own fucking hearts they're making money doing it they're making sponsorships that's what i mean if anyone if, if someone out there would be honest about the game that'd be one thing but the game has been terrible since launch and capcom has desperately desperately tried to get people to keep playing it through these underhanded microtransaction tactics it's horseshit okay It's absolute horseshit, and I'm tired of it. I'm tired of people not being honest about that fucking game. That is the worst numbered Street Fighter. Street Fighter, okay, it's better than Street Fighter 1, but 2 and 3 and 4 are all better. The entire Versus series is better, all right? The Capcom versus SNK series is better. All these series are better, but people still play Street Fighter 5 because it's the current Street Fighter. They don't, they're so desperately afraid if they don't play and support Street Fighter V that Street Fighter will die entirely. If you don't support the current game, even as bad as it is, the whole community will collapse on its head and no one will ever have Street Fighter hype ever again. You couldn't be further from the truth. What happened in the 2000s? People basically clung to the old ones because Capcom wasn't making any. Capcom came back with Street Fighter IV and it reinvigorated the entire fighting game community. What we need is a reboot. That's what we really need, a reboot, a reimagining, a, a from the ground up working these games, instead of seeing them as long-term money revenue streams, we need someone to actually be hired by Capcom who cares about competitive fighters and make one that's fundamentally sound from the ground up first, then worry about generating the revenue stream after. But that's the problem. The whole game was designed to be a revenue stream from the fucking start, and when you do that, you fail. And that's what happened with Street Fighter V. So... The game stinks. I'm sorry. It's just not a good game. I've never liked it for many different reasons. Okay? There's your answer. Andre the DJ did a $20 super chat. Thank you so much, sir. He says, I'm glad this is a Mario Golf premiere. If it was tennis, I don't think I could stand the racket. Credit to Jack Tripper, John Ritter for that punchline. There you go. Thank you very much, Andre the DJ. Then he did another $10 super chat. So thank you very much for those super chats, Andre the DJ. And then DXP actually did a second $5 super chat. So DXP remains the, the, the most current super chatter. It says the following. Any chance you might consider playing the Mega Man X Collection as a marathon? It would be enjoyable to watch your power through, in my opinion. Now, I don't know what the X Collection is. Back in the day, you know, back when I was doing retro marathons and the like during the summertime to kill time, you know, that was also back when there weren't so many games to play and ongoing playthroughs with me. And, you know, I just had a lot more time to play games because it was in a streaming format, too. Uh, I did a Mega Man X marathon. I believe I played 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 or something like that. I don't know how far I got in the series. Um, but I played a bunch of them. And one of them was so rage-inducing, I don't know if I even beat it. It was so bad. The ending is just fucking shit. Um, but I don't remember how far I got. I don't know if this collection that you're saying would be those same games or not. I don't know. Um, I just don't know. Uh, I think if you people were interested in a retro marathon, I'd always be open to it. I like retro games, you know. X Collection is X1 through X4. X Collection 2 is X5 through X8, says Maverick Rob 91 Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the first three to four games are the best ones. Once they started getting into the PlayStation era versions, I didn't really like them that much. I felt like they got too, too ridiculous. So. All right. So thank you guys for the Super Chats. Now, we switch over to the tips. Let's give a shout-out for tips, okay? First of all, overnight, 
I got a dollar thirty tip from someone named it's Benjamin Tuff, and he says the following. YouTube's algorithm randomly suggested a 10-year-old video of yours to me, part one of Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions playthrough. For those of you who don't know, before I even read the rest of his message, so back in the day when I was just a YouTuber on demand making videos, I wasn't streaming, there were two playthroughs that became virally popular for me on YouTube. The first was my Spider-Man Web of Shadows playthrough, which got over a million views on the final part. And then, when I played Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions... That one blew up explosively in popularity. I'm talking, again, millions of views on certain videos in that playthrough, okay? Those were actually the videos that got my channel known because my channel always would show up in search results. If you ever searched on YouTube for a Spider-Man video game, my videos have the most views of anything. You, I'm, tr I'm serious. Anyone who ever played a Spider-Man video game, my videos have the most views ever on YouTube. Okay, so people would actually just searching for Spider-Man on YouTube, find my channel, find my content, and I would get tens of thousands of new viewers a year just based on that fact alone. Okay, then at one point, YouTube decided to flip a switch, and when they did, all of my videos from Spider-Man don't show up in search results anymore. It's completely inexplicable, because why would videos with millions of views that obviously people all over the world have enjoyed for years not be worthy to be in search anymore. I don't know, but YouTube did it. I was getting no exaggeration. I was getting tens of thousands of views on those videos every month. It went from 10,000 views to zero. And no one watches those videos anymore. It just doesn't show up anymore when you search for Spider-Man. Doesn't make any sense. You know, they changed the algorithm at some point to say, oh, don't favor those older videos. Only show newer videos or maybe only show lengthier videos. Who knows? But they destroyed it. They destroyed my channel by changing things behind the scenes. It's pretty fucked up. So, speaking of the Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions playthrough, let's continue with what Benjamin Tuff was saying. He says, your gameplay and commentary, when it was unbroken by shoutouts, it's very entertaining. Any way that we can get something back like this, can you do shoutouts together once an hour? Uh, no. When I became a live streamer in 2017, I committed to a new formula of gameplay. Why? Because the on-demand strategy of videos for youtube does not work anymore there is literally no one doing that everyone has adopted a more interactive medium when it comes to games and gameplay almost no one i say almost because there's a few people that have actually grown so large all right and so popular that they don't do the interactive streaming thing but that's few and far between you're talking maybe what 50 people across the whole world who could just do on-demand videos with no streaming interactions and actually make a living doing it it's very very rare i would say the people who do do it usually have to do scripted content they have to edit stuff into the videos it's not just raw gameplay you see what i'm saying that old formula of unedited raw playthrough with just me playing the game and doing commentary over it is stale is tired is old and people don't like it anymore it's just not possible okay um it did work for a long time I did that from 2008 into 2013. Then I adopted direct capture and live streaming, and I still continued to do that same kind of style all the way through 2017. And at that point, that's when the bottom fell out. I realized I can no longer make a living off of just that kind of content. I had to change it up. And that's when I became primarily funded by crowdfunding rather than worrying about ad revenue on on-demand videos of me just playing games and talking to myself. Okay? So... I understand. You watch that content back, and at that time, it worked perfectly. People loved my commentary style back then. It was something unique and different that other people were not really doing. Then a lot of people, quite frankly, saw me get popular doing it and bit off of me. There's a lot of other people who were doing it around the same time as me who the same thing happened to them. It was me and maybe, I, I'd argue, maybe a dozen people. We were all kind of doing the same impromptu commentary style. We all got popular for doing it, and the next thing you know, everyone under the sun is starting to do this kind of gameplay commentary now. Okay? And, you know, it is what it is. I, uh, I enjoyed doing it as long as I could, but things change, right? Things change over time, man. So I had to adapt to the times to survive, and that's what I did. It's not that I don't enjoy doing the offline gameplay. By the way, I, I've said over the years how different it was back then when I did that style of gameplay. For example, there's no live audience. There's no commitment for me having to play the game at a certain time of day or do a certain amount of gameplay in a short period of time. There's no commitment to say thanks for a bunch of contributions. It's just, 
I sit down, I play the game at my own pace, record, upload, done. Some days I would do two hours of gameplay because I wasn't feeling it. And other days I would do eight hours to ten hours of gameplay because I was really feeling it. It was however I felt. And again, back in the day, before the market became incredibly oversaturated with people copying each other, all right, when I was one of the top guys doing it, I could put out any content and people would eat it up because they were grateful for the fact that someone was doing that kind of content. Then when the market became oversaturated, it became more about just razzing people fucking doing it. And it became not fun to do anymore. Just being very honest with you guys. It became over time stale. And it got to the point where I was just tired of people just saying that it sucked. Like, well, you know, then I'm going to do something different. Okay? So I did. And in 2017, I became a live interactive streamer and the rest is history. Okay? So, Benjamin, I hear you. I absolutely understand what you're saying. I, I, I know that though that at that time period when I was playing those games, we're talking 10 to 12 years ago, that was a unique time in YouTube and gaming itself. It was a, a, a very explosive time where things were blowing up with people making videos on demand and stuff like that. Streaming wasn't even a thing back then, okay, when I was playing that game. I agree with you. That commentary style was fun back then, right? But it is what it is. It's basically you get to a point where you have to change to survive. I couldn't just stay the same guy constantly and expect that I was going to be able to keep doing what I do for a living. I had to adapt with the times, and I did. So I hear you. I like that content. Now, he's basically saying, could we ever go back to that content? Uh, unfortunately, I would argue, until I get to a point where I'm not reliant on income as much as I am right now, uh, no. I need to do interactive streams because I make the majority of money that I make is crowdfunding. There's very little income that I make from ad revenue. Just being honest here. It's a very small percentile compared to all the crowdfunding I get. You know, you and you guys <clears throat> do super chats, memberships, tipping. Huge. That's the majority of, of what I make. The ad revenue is just a little bit of extra on top of that in the background. Okay? So all that being said, um, I appreciate what you're saying. I'm glad to hear that you found one of the old videos and you liked it. I would What I would say is enjoy it as, as kind of a... A remembrance of a bygone era if that if youtube had not changed the way that they did if youtube had not changed all the algorithms and made it that they wanted to feature only certain kind of content creators and everyone else got brushed under the rug i very much might still be making that kind of content today i'm just being honest but youtube fucked up youtube sabotaged their own business they made it so that certain kind of content creators got featured and those content creators got highlighted in a very negative light to the point where advertisers didn't want to advertise on youtube anymore and pulled the majority of their high-paying ads. This created the YouTube adpocalypse that made it that people were doing on-demand videos couldn't make a living on YouTube anymore. That's YouTube's fault for changing the site algorithms to doing what they were doing. It, they completely fucked up from a management standpoint and destroyed their own business from within. So it sucks because, yeah, back then, it was crazy fun. Pop in a game, play a game, do silly, irreverent commentary over it, don't have to worry about any repercussions. There was no fucking cancel culture back then. Just do whatever. Have fun. Tons of people watch it. Make a living doing it. You know? Awesome. Then sadly, just things change over time and, you know, degrade into, into shit. <laughs> I don't know what else, how else to describe it. That's exactly what happened. I didn't change. The site did. And then the mentality of the viewers did. People becoming more toxic over the years and everything. And you couldn't just make a living doing that crap anymore. So... You change when you roll with the punches, you change with the times, right? Okay. <laughs> uh, Eternal Napalm. This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Robert Rayhart says, They didn't sabotage their own business. They evolved it. YouTube numbers have never been higher or continue to increase. You have no idea what the fuck you're talking about, Robert Rayhart. You're an idiot. YouTube ad revenue plummeted. It was less than more than half reduced in 2017 and has never gotten back to the levels it used to be because they ruined their own fucking business model. You are a moron. Talking out of your butt like you know anything about YouTube. Just because views are up doesn't mean that business is up. Yikes, you're dumb. Anyway, let's continue. You always got to have some idiot who has to come into and contradict what I say with no factual evidence of anything. Just talking out of their fucking asshole idiot anyway eternal napalm took me a dollar 30 and he says my recommendation hold on i'm just gonna get rid of this idiot <laughs> it's not what i wanted to do <laughs> i clicked the wrong thing because the fucking channel moderation on youtube sucks there we go fuck off 
Okay, now he's out of here. Dunce. Okay, Eternal Napalm took the dollar thirty. He's my recommendation for one of the games to play in July is Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. Uh, it may be the darkest and most challenging game in the franchise. It's where the Prime series hit its stride. It's about 20 hours long and has excellent reviews. Now, if I remember correctly, I own the HD collection, right? Like, I bought the HD collection of Metroid Prime a long time ago, right? Hold on. That's how I played Metroid Prime 1. Is I think it was it on the Wii or was it on the Wii U? I don't remember. It was on one of them. I mean, it was a long time ago when I played Metroid Prime. So I don't actually remember how I played it. So technically, this idea could work. All right. Um technically, you know, this could be a situation where I I could just jump right in and play. I just got to re-download from somewhere. But I don't know. I don't remember. I'd have to look into that. Uh, I don't know if there's demand for Metroid Prime 2. Metroid Prime 2 has been a game that has been nominated over the years for something that I would play, for example, during, say, a chill a chill time or people nominating a game for a viewer's choice playthrough. It's actually been nominated a few times and gotten... I think gotten to the polling at least once or twice for that. Um, for whatever reason, it's never actually won. So I would say that is a consideration. Yes, that is a consideration. It's something that I would consider playing in July as a uh, as a playthrough since I have the downtime. Okay. All right. Eternal Lay pumps with another dollar. He says, "With summer raging, do you ever consider going to the beach in order to beat the heat? Getting the beach towel and swim trunks, heading out and catching some rays and waves." That is probably the best, the, the worst way to beat the heat. You're going into the, the sun and heat to beat the heat. How do you beat the heat? By going into the sun. <laughs> How does that work? I never understood that. Like, listen, going to the beach is fine. Every time I've ever gone to the beach in my entire life, I got overheated. It was hot as fuck because you're in the sun all day. How do you beat the heat by going to the heat? I, I was a little confusing. You know, how do you beat the heat? Stay in the fucking shade. Get a nice cool drink. Sit down, relax in air conditioning. That's how you beat the fucking heat. You don't go to the to the sun. <laughs> the water, people are saying. Okay, the water. So you're in the water for how long? And then you're in the sun. <laughs> so overheat yourself by being in the sun on the beach, then go into the water to cool down to normal temperature, come out and overheat again on the beach. How does this work? Parasol and water. Why would you go to the beach to sit in the shade? I'm going to the beach, the sunniest part of the of the of the area, with sand and sun, and I'm gonna sit under an umbrella. Why did you go to the beach then? You could have stayed in your house. <laughs> right? Listen, I understand. There's people who love the beach culture. I, I get it. I totally get it. Alright? But a lot of that stuff is just incredibly contradictory to me. I came to the beach to lay on a blanket. Then why did you go to the beach? You could have stayed at home and laid on a, on a sofa, right? <laughs> Why did you go to the beach and bring a parasol? You could have stayed in your house. You didn't have to go to the beach. Why eat out? Because you can eat in your house. Because when you eat out, number one, you don't have to cook. And it's a different kind of food than what you would get in your own house. There's the difference. <laughs> anyway, I'm just saying, you know, obviously I'm just being silly here. But I've never been into the whole beach culture thing. Um, ever in my life, okay? <clears throat> All right. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> let's continue. <clears throat> uh, Snow Carl. To me, $1.30. Uh, oh, I'm not even... Snow Carl. All right. How about this? It's very simple. All right? Very simple. You don't bring up stupid shit. And you know that. You know better. There's absolutely no point you ignore it. You ignore stupid shit. All right, Snow Carl? Just ignore the stupid... No one knows what you're talking about because you tipped me this and no one even knows what the subject is. I'm just going to say this. You don't bring it up. You don't mention it. We've always said that people trying to fuck with me and people trying to harass me and people trying to troll me, you ignore it. Not a lot on the streams, all right? Why the fuck would I bring it up? It's the dumbest idea possible, right? You ignore the nonsense. 
you completely ignore it and then it goes away. So that that's my that's my my take on the subject. Yes, there's always outside elements involved trying to get me involved in drama and get me involved in stupid shit. I don't play that game. You guys know. I'm on the internet. I do my little stream here every day. I chill with you guys. I play video games. That's all I care about. I don't care about other idiots trying to draw me into their fucking drama and their nonsense. I completely ignore it. And that's my philosophy. And that's how it's always going to be. I refuse to get pulled into bullshit. All right? So you bring it up, you're wasting your time. You know, seriously, like, why would you even bring that up? What, what productive thing could come out of me addressing something like that? Nothing. Nothing at all. In fact, all it would do is exacerbate drama. Because that's what they want. They want to rise out of me. They want me to bring up these certain dramatic topics to try to pull me into drama. I don't want to be involved in drama. I'm just a gameplay streamer who sits here and chills with my community every day, period. I have no uh, desire to be involved in any of that shit. I just want to be left alone and play my games and have a good time with you guys on the stream, period. So I refuse, absolutely 100% refuse to involve myself in any bullshit. I'm just ignoring it. And that's the best thing. If you ignore the fuck out of it, it goes away. <laughs> okay? Tarantula MS 2018 tipped me $5. Thank you, Tarantula, for the $5 tip. I appreciate that very much. Good to see you. He says, hey, you Phil. And Ty Holmes 12 tipped me $10. Said, hype for a new game. Me too. I hope that it's good. You know, typically, first party Nintendo titles, they do a good job with them. They polish them well. And they end up being quite entertaining. And again, the thing that I really like about these first-party Nintendo titles is that basically uh, they have these fun story modes or campaign modes. Unlike other sports games and other things where it's just about, oh, it's just about the competitive play. It's really not about that at all. Okay, it's not. It's, it's just about having fun. It's just about having a silly thing with probably with silly characters tossed into a story see how they're you know how do the nintendo characters or the mario characters factor into a golf plot line right pretty ridiculous right so yeah i'm excited i think it's going to be fun likely it'll be a few streams of doing the story mode and then when everything's unlocked then we'll jump into the online play and we'll see if there's any longevity to that but at the very least usually when you buy a first party nintendo title you get some good traction out of the game because you don't just have to okay well all there is to this is the co the competitive play right no there's actually, you know, campaign and everything to it. And that's pretty neat. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we got another super chat that came in. And it has not loaded. I have to reload the screen. For some reason, the screen died. Shout out to Kane Z 7 who did a super chat and says, Do you play games in your free time? Uh, not really. <clears throat> uh, since I am a full-time streamer and... You know, the vast majority of time that I spend on my streams is playing video games. I actually actively make it an effort to not play video games when I'm not streaming. Uh, that doesn't mean that there's not gameplay elements to my life. You know, if my wife is playing a game, sometimes I'll watch her play. Especially if it's a game that I've played before, sometimes I'll help her. Um, if, for example, uh, we're, we're, watching, we're currently watching someone play Mass Effect 1 Legendary Edition, which is really cool. Because I get to basically watch someone else play a game that I just played and like and see what their take is on it and see how they did. You know, they made different class, different choices, different build for Shepard, different, you know, oh, this character, I'll take on a mission when I took a different character. It's cool to do that. I like that. Um, but am I sitting there playing the games? No. In fact, I, I don't even have. Outside of the time that, I, that I'm on stream, I don't really have significant time that I would even be able to sit down and play a game, just being honest here. My life is full, as they say, between spending time with my wife and my cat Jasper and all my responsibilities of adult life outside of my streams. I don't have time to sit down for hours on end and be playing video games. Um, you know, at one point, years ago, yes, I've already publicly talked about this. Years ago, I was actively playing a bunch of mobile games. Games such as WWE Supercard, uh, Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. Uh, there was a Marvel game called F was it Future Fight that played kind of like Marvel Ultimate Alliance that I really liked. Uh, so back in the day, you know, we're talking upwards of three, four years ago and older, I was playing some mobile games. I mean, at one point I was even... Oh, that's right. I was playing Dokkan Battle. That's correct, King Goku. And I forgot about that one. Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle. And I was also... At one point I played Hearthstone. Remember that? Uh, and those were all playthroughs that were pretty much just... 
me doing stuff casually. I wasn't recording. I wasn't streaming. That was just casual play. But after years of those and finding out what money sinks they are and what a pain of time investment they are, I pretty much stopped playing all those those games. So, <clears throat> yeah, I pretty much do not play any games outside of what you see me doing on a stream. No, that's pretty much, you know, that's all I'm doing. So, okay. All right, let me take another quick look. Did we, I think at this point now, I might have done all the shout outs. I think we got it all. Nope, I was wrong. A couple more tips have come in. Alberto Ponte tipped me $2.30. He says, Phil, hope you're good. Ignore the outside noise and keep doing you. Hype for the game. Exactly right, Alfred. Again, you know, there's sadly, there's people on the internet. They are drama hounds. They want to cause drama in every possible part of everyone's life around them so that they can get attention for themselves. That is not me. And you guys know I want to stay as far away from other people's garbage as possible. I want nothing to do with that baloney. You guys know that. So for me, nope. I stay away from it. I have nothing to do with it. I just want to play, sit here and do my stuff. And that's what I'm focused on. So, thank you very much, Alfred. Um, Barrel Shroud tipped me a dollar thirty and says, Have you ever played mini golf or real golf in real life and also bubbles for a birdie or hole in one? <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Uh, yes, I have played mini golf. Many times, actually. When I was growing up, there was a mini golf place called Milford Amusement Center in Milford, Connecticut. And they had a really cool mini golf outdoor course that had all kinds of cool obstacles and things. And I would go there every once in a while with my parents. Uh, then later on, in the 2000s, I had, there was a mini golf course in somewhere else in Connecticut. I forget exactly where it was. And I used to go there with some of my Street Fighter buddies. We would go there and play against each other, mini golf. It was pretty fun. Um, so, yeah, I played in a couple different mini golf. And, of course, also, if I were going like, on vacation or something, sometimes there would be like mini golf courses there and stuff like that. I would go to, you know, go to a little arcade or go to a mini golf place when you're on vacation with my parents. And we do some mini golf there, too. Uh, I like mini golf. It's silly, of course. Not meant to be taken seriously, but it's very silly. You know, a little competition with your buddies. Ha ha! I'll beat you in this this hole or whatever. You fuck around. It's fun. I like. I do enjoy mini golf. Not serious, but it's a, a silly little uh, diversion. Uh, now, as for blowing bubbles for a birdie or a hole in one, that's up to you guys. I do have the bubbles here. If you if I get like a hole in one or a birdie, you know, I'm not. I don't play golf games. I don't know how on earth I'm going to be doing that stuff. <laughs> Maybe it'll be complete luck, right? But if I do do well and you guys want to see something like that, yeah, I can blow some silly bubbles or whatever if you guys want that. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. So. Anyone else have any other concerns or... Uh, or topics to talk about snow crawl really snow crawl right, i'm gonna say it again now snow crawl every question that you ask is intrusive seriously now he says what content creators do you and cat watch snow crawl you've been here before when i've explained i'm not going to talk about that because if i do that these idiots who stalk me will likely try to hunt down these content creators and spam them nonsense about me you know Dark, Dark Side Phil watches your content <laughs> no i'm not gonna have people harassed just because i watched this a few videos of theirs on youtube so stop it i'm gonna say it right now snow crawl Fucking stop it. You know better. You're asking intrusive questions on purpose. We're tired of it. We're wise to your bullshit. All right? Yes, there is a full story to Mario Golf Swaggins. There is. Full story. That's what we're doing. We're starting today with the story. Apparently, you need to play through the story to actually unlock all the courses if you want to play the multiplayer and stuff later. Okay? Yeah, it should be interesting. I want to see what characters are in the game. I really have I really don't know that much about it. I've seen a few, you know, screenshots and a few a few things on Twitter, but I tried to stay away from spoilers, so I actually don't know who like the cast of the game is and everything. So Hello Simple Bubble, how are you today? Good to see ya. Kagame says he misses the good pizza hut. So this is funny, people were talking on pre stream this morning about pizza and how it's changed over the years. People are like, yeah, you know, dude, remember when you used to actually order pizza from, like, Domino's or Pizza Hut, and they actually made the dough, and, like, you know, it was fresh? But, yeah, now all that shit's mass-produced in some fucking factory somewhere, and they just take it out of refrigeration, they slap it down into a, pre a pan, preform the, the pizza, 
Because they don't even fucking, you know... The only exception, I think that Domino's does have a handmade style, but it's definitely not fresh. Now, I remember back in the day, Pizza Hut was a sit-down pizza restaurant, okay? You could order pizzas for yourself, like a custom pizza, you know, however you wanted with your own toppings, or you could get a pan pizza, which was huge. It was a giant rectangular pizza, and the whole family would just b grab the, the, the square slices and you'd eat that you'd be a family style sharing pizza. You could also get a personal pan pizza, which is a very small pizza just for you if you just wanted certain toppings just on your own pizza. And then they had all these sides. You could get wings and things, you know, as, as the appetizer. I think they had mozzarella sticks and stuff back in the day, stuff like that. Like it was an actual sit down restaurant experience. And then they changed it. They, they pretty much closed down all the sit down pizza huts and they changed their entire formula to be delivery only low quality ingredients everything pre-made somewhere else slapped together and now you got the shit that you get today it's just not good it's just not good man <laughs> okay see clown world says domino's is cheap two medium pizzas two toppings six bucks each all right i kid you not i actually just told my wife this story the other day when I was in, when I was living in in Connecticut, sharing an apartment with two roommates, it was a three bedroom apartment, and I was working at the bank job that I had, Wells Fargo Financial. Okay, I was poor. I basically didn't have any money, and so what I would do for food, this is no exaggeration, I would buy the five 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 deal at Domino's. Now this was the mid two thousands. You know, we're talking over fifteen years ago. Things were a lot different. You could do a deal at Domino's. Any toppings. Any style medium pizza, $5 pizza, get three for $5 each. So 15 bucks, you're getting three medium pizzas of and everything you want. So I would get like, one would be the Supreme Meats pizza that would have salami and pepperoni and sausage and bacon. And then one would be the Philly cheesesteak pizza that had the steak and the peppers and the onions and the, the cheese sauce. And then one would be like something different. I would order something custom made, you know, like maybe a Hawaiian or something different, you know. So I have three medium pizzas for 15 bucks. And I'm not kidding you. Know, this is how unhealthy I used to be in my youth because I was a fucking idiot. I would just eat pizza for three to four to five days. Like the pizza would show up. I'd eat two pieces. Later in the day, I'd be hungry. Eat two pieces of the other pizza. At night, oh, I got a little bit of a craving. Eat a piece of pizza. Next day, I wake up in the morning. Oh, I'm hungry. Pizza. <laughs> That's not, it was gross. And I would do that. I'm not kidding. That would be my food for like the week. Three medium pizzas. 15 bucks. <laughs> Yummy. That was that healthy lifestyle. Gee, I wonder at one point in my life why I weighed 240 pounds. Right? <laughs> Gee, I wonder. Yeah. See, I look back at that now. I'm like, what the fuck? But back then I was stupid. I was young and stupid. You know? <laughs> What was my biggest weight? That was my biggest weight. I say around 240. Yeah. Now, now I fluctuate anywhere. I can I can dip below 200 and go to like 195 sometimes, and then sometimes I go over and I get all the way up to like 210. But it fluctuates depending on my lifestyle, what I'm eating recently, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I was real heavy. <clears throat> no, I was not a bank teller. I worked at Wells Fargo Financial. I basically sold loans, credit cards, and I refinanced mortgages for people. That's what I did. How much did I weigh when I worked out and I was ripped? If I remember correctly, at the height of my workout phase, which was the early 2000s, I believe, again, I was between like 195, 200, but the reason it was muscle. It wasn't fat. I had like almost no fat on me because in high school, I was skinny as shit. In high school, everyone knew me as like the skinny dude. And then... I gained weight when I went to college, but then I started working out and I burned all the fat and it became muscle. So I was, you know, my doctor told me when I went to a doctor in college, they said my ideal weight should be between 185, 190. That if I could maintain 185, 190, that's like the lean weight that I should keep that I would be healthy. That's what he told me. Chocoboco has tipped me $5. Is there any chance of bringing back the Genesis Mini this July? I'm looking forward to Chrono Trigger if that happens. Maybe, you know, I know the Genesis Mini was pretty fun when we played it. And I know there was some retro stuff on there that people were still maybe wondering if I would ever play. Uh, just never got around to it. Uh, it's a possibility. I still have it. It's right over there, actually. It's not hooked up anymore, but it's right over there. That would be an easy thing to do. 
Adam just did a $5 super chat. That's how's life out there, Phil? Life is good. It's about to get a lot hotter, but life is still good. I'm enjoying everything going on here, man. Having a good time, so. How tall am I? I'm like 5'11 and a half, so. I guess on paper I'm 5'11, although technically I think I'm closer to 6 feet, but I guess I'm 5'11. Doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> Did I ever have a six-pack of abs? No, I did not. No, I didn't go that crazy lifting. My lifting was mostly arms, back, legs. We didn't really focus too much on stomach. I did sit-ups and stuff, but I never did, like, weight training on the stomach. Never heard of pizza, my heart, simple bubble. No, I don't know what that is. Well, snow crawl to another dollar thirty. If my question is perceived as intrusive, I'm not my intention. I'm curious because I enjoy your content. I want to know more about what you do off stream. My bad. I will try to be better. Yes, you have to understand. You seriously have to understand this position that I'm in. That I have a group of stalkerish idiots that will not leave me alone. So every little thing that I say on a stream is used against me. I'm not going to start talking about all this other stuff that could get other people involved in trouble. All right, I'm just not. So here's your answer. Anything involved in drama or anything I don't willingly offer up as information you probably don't want to ask <laughs> it's that simple <clears throat> okay all right ladies and gentlemen let's take a brief break thank you by the way good pre-stream and, and very supportive pre-stream so far let's take a brief break i'm gonna use the restroom when we come back it is mario golf super rush premiering it is fully installed on my switch ready to go so we just boot it right up get started and uh, thanks for being patient. Thanks for a nice, fun, interactive pre-stream. Give, give me like five, ten minutes, and I'll be right back. I, I recommend you take this opportunity, grab a drink or a snack for yourself, use the restroom yourself, whatever you want to do. I'll be right back with the gameplay. All right, guys? Thanks. See you in just a bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> 